Brad Stevens just got another steal in the NBA draft, selecting Anton Watson at pick 54. The veteran wing from Gonzaga could be a key piece for this Celtics and could be a nice addition as Brad Stevens strikes once again. Welcome back to Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez with my co-host Godfrey Simpire, and we're going to be breaking down this Celtics news today for you guys. Without further ado, make sure to hit that like button. You guys have been absolutely crushing it. But first off, let's dive into this news as Anton Watson was selected at pick 54. And I know a lot of Celtics fans wanted them to select Bronny James. Godfrey and I were kind of breaking it down, talking, joking around it before we started. But as we could see from Sham Sharania, Boston did select Watson at pick 54. He averaged 14.5 points per game, 7.5 rebounds, and 2.6 assists on 58% shooting at Gonzaga. Not bad for a pick 54. We want to look at some in-detail stats from Bobby Kravitsky. He's a 6'8 forward from Gonzaga, known for his versatility as an on-ball defender who can guard multiple positions. A savvy passer as well that can also strike from the deep at three-point range, shooting 41.2%. He also finished number two in steals in program history in Gonzaga, only trailing John Stockton. So Godfrey, kind of breaking this down, kind of going over this pick here from the Boston Celtics. We already saw Brad Stevens strike out and nail a pick in Baylor Shireman getting a big selection. What do you think of this one? I mean, I think uh, Brad Stevens went two for two here. I think he's basically nailed this draft. I think Anton is going to be a perfect fit in the future. Um, you know, one of these players that can really do it all. And the 41% from three is very striking to me. Being someone that can knock down threes, especially in this type of N NBA, is super, super important. So I'm very glad that he's on the team, and I'm very glad that we drafted him. Because he was someone that obviously could have went earlier with his stats and basically how he plays on defense. He can guard anyone one through four. So I'm, it's very surprising to see that he was at that pick and that we were able to land him right there, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I'm very, very happy. At pick 54, I honestly thought that the Celtics were going to be getting somebody that was more of a project piece, somebody that we might have to work on. But seeing a guy like this kind of come in, and as we know, most likely going to be playing with the G League and kind of getting some reps in Summer League, that's somebody that you want to see get some improvement with this squad. We also kind of want to look at this as well. I want to bring this up. The Ringer compared him to a, a little bit of an Al Horford type, similar as well. He is 24 years old, which alongside Baylor Shireman, what could be a concern for some Celtics fans. As you know, these guys are a little bit older, but in my eyes, I think that this is a fantastic move and one of the ones that Brad Stevens really, really struck big on because you mentioned three-point shooting it's part of Missoula's game and we've really seen that be a success with this Boston Celtics team so that kind of leads into our next thought where Godfrey I'm kind of going to ask you your thoughts on the draft because we kind of just give our initial reaction we'll do a little bit more of a deep dive obviously on Anton Watson for some future videos but what are your overall thoughts overall reactions if you had to give this draft a letter grade what would be your grade I mean I think um personally I think I give it an A I think it would have been an A+. Plus. I think we still need to address our center situation, especially with Chris Stops not being back till maybe like halfway point of the season. We don't know whether or not like how stable he's going to be, especially older Al Horford. But with Anton, it's going to be able to fill um, a void in the future seasons. And also with um, Bay um, Bayer Shireman, he's a great, great, great player. And I think he's going to make a difference if not this year, but next year, especially. And I think the biggest thing with getting these older players, I think it's very much shows like they're in a win now situation, obviously winning and winning a championship. So being in that win now situation, you don't really want to get these project type players. You really want to get those type of players that really are good at a couple things, but and um, essentially are going to fill their real role, especially, you know, a team like the Celtics. We have a lot of these best like role players in the league and we need those players to really fit what we want to do exactly i want to hammer that point that you just brought upon us was selecting guys that are ready to go because we've seen with this celtics team in years past 2017 2018 that makes them 
questionable selections, taking Aaron Neesmith, taking Romeo Langford, who had that upside, had that potential, but ultimately, in my eyes, the Celtics could have used those picks to maybe trade and get some better assets to help that team win now. And even though Brad Stevens did make those moves, he was able to, you know, get Derek White, who was key and impactful, get Malcolm Brogdon, which turned into Kristaps Porzingis. I do think guys like Baylor Shimer and even Anton Watson could be those, you know, holes or replacements for those guys that are aging for this Celtics team. Guys like Holiday, guys like Horford, possibly even a guy like Sam Hauser, if he does leave, to be those replacements. And I'd rather Brad draft a replacement guy than go after a guy who's just gonna be a potential maybe bust or maybe can boom because this team needs those slots to be filled if they want you know Tatum, Brown, Holiday, all this core to stay together and want to push for a championship. I I totally agree. I think that's the biggest thing right now is just continuing to add on to what we already have and especially letting these players like last year we had Jordan Walsh who was able to grow in the throughout the G League throughout the G League season and so on that could have possibly played in the playoffs if it wasn't for the emergence of Xavier Tillman. But, you know, he has another season under his belt. And these players now that we just added are going to be able to have that season in the G League with the main Red Claws. And they're going to be able to show that they're really these players that can obviously play in the future. Exactly. And we obviously know what that main G League team as well, that they are an outstanding team. They made the finals last season. They were one short win from winning that championship. Guys like Kata, guys like Hauser, guys like Cornette, guys like Walsh have been through that system before. So we know guys like Baylor Shireman and Anton Watson, and even if they go down there, if they're possibly two-way guys, or even if Baylor Shireman gets a contract similar like Walsh did, but, you know, kind of goes back and forth, down, up and down, I still think they'll get that experience and get that, you know, I guess comfortability and acclimation from those guys who have previously done it you know what i mean telling them keep keep at that work keep going at it. eventually you'll crack that rotation eventually you get your opportunity and that could be eventually for a guy like walsh or possibly even hauser this year we've seen hauser really expand through this year but walsh could be that guy on that brink breaking that ice possibly and i know a lot of celtics fans are excited yeah very much there's a lot of things to be excited about especially going into next season i think the biggest thing is that you know the celtics are very much an underrated team for their player development and I think it's not talked about because of like, you know, the Aaron Neesmith or like the players like that, that really didn't develop. But I think re- very much so with the development of um, Derek White's three point shot, you know, the addition of like players like that, that are able to just grow throughout their tenure with the Celtics. It's going to be a great thing to see on how a player like Bear Shireman develops his all around game because we already know he's a great three point shooter. So it's going to be great to see if he can develop the outside ranges of his game to become a consistent player for the Celtics rotation. I think so too. And like you mentioned, like he already has those intangibles in the shooting. So learning that, you know, defensive drills kind of from a guy like Sam Hauser, who shares a similar type of skill type, obviously wasn't selected in the first round, was an undrafted guy, but he knows that hustle. He knows that hard road ahead of him. So he can teach some things I think valuable to to Baylor Shireman to, you know, get him into the gym and ultimately unlock him. And we'll get to see these guys play through the summer league. We'll get to see them play through the G League. So we'll get to see some excitement. It's not like they're going to be stashed at the bottom of the roster getting no playing time, which is at least good to see. But Godfrey, before we head out, we got to get to the comment of the day today, which drop down your thoughts, drop down how you're feeling about this video down below in the comment section, and you could be featured for the comment of the day. But today's comment of the day is going to be going out to our guy, Jeremy Anderson says he just watched the ESPN segment on Kristaps Porzingis' surgery and agrees with Stephen A. He'll get plenty of rest four months till the season starts and have plenty of basketball left in the regular season if we get back up to speed. I don't see a reason to believe he won't be perfectly healthy at Kristaps Porzingis in the playoffs, and I predict we'll see him fully healthy into the next postseason trip. I kind of tend to agree with this. I really like this comment. Godfrey, you kind of brought up the fact of the Celtics not drafting and going looking at center, but looking at some wing positions, even with the possibility of Cornette or maybe Tillman leaving in free agency, Porzingis' injury, now Horford getting a little bit older. What are your kind of thoughts on, you know, this breaking down this comment and, you know, both the thoughts of free agency with the big men before we head out? I mean, I think the biggest thing personally is that we need to address the situation come free agency. Obviously, this um free agency class for the big men, it's not particularly amazing, but it's not particularly bad as well. And especially with, um, our cap space we're not going to be able to get a high-end center right now so looking for a bra- um a player that brad stevens likes that's going to fit the system is obviously important especially for the beginning of the season where most of the minutes are going to be given to this player that we pick up in free agency so obviously 
Kristaps needs the time to rest, especially to make a big, like, a big, like, challenge into the, you know, postseason. So it's going to be a, the biggest point of just making sure he gets that rest into being able to play long into the season. Because Kristaps hasn't been able to play long into the season in years prior. So hopefully with this added rest for him, it's going to be able to bring, like, uplift him and be able to play long into the season. Because that's the biggest thing. I think so too. And I, that would be great if, you know, maybe he misses 15 to 20 games, but that allows him to play the last 60. That would be great for the Boston Celtics and hopefully get continue to him to be able to go into that regular season, healthy into that postseason, And we could see him have a dominant full out postseason because we got to see bits and spurses where he was very dominant, but not, you know, fully throughout the postseason. Exactly. But, that, that game against the Mavs where he was just coming out and shooting everything and everything was just going in. That was just like what could be in like a next playoff se season. So it's possible. Exactly. And I and I think that Kristaps Porzingis can even ex escalate that offensive and defensive ability if he's fully healthy and it gets that, you know, rest to be that guy. So ultimately, I think the Celtics are going to be solid. They have some great draft picks. Brad Stevens has done it once again, getting some two fantastic selections, Baylor Shireman and Anton Watson. But that doesn't mean that the draft is over, that the content is going to stop over here on Celtics Digest because free agency starts July 6th, a little less, a little over than a week away. We're going to have a bunch of news, bunch of content revolving around this team because as you guys know, some players have player options. Some guys are free agents. Xavier Tillman, Luke Cornett, who are the Celtics going to choose? We'll have all the answers, all the news, everything revolving around the team featured on here on Celtics Digest. If you guys enjoyed the content, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. It really is appreciated over here. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. From your hosts, Bruce and Godfrey, we'll be catching you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your night and go Boston Celtics.